Hi, Priam David here, and today I'm excited to announce a new Spotlight Composer series produced by the McGill Association of Student Composers. This series will highlight the music of different composers at McGill. And today, I have the privilege of presenting you all with my own music. Before I begin, I'd like to mention a major influence in my own music, and that is Ligeti's use of microphone. Now, before I start talking about microphone, I must first mention the emergence of Ligeti's sound mass style. This came about during his time working at the electronic music studio WDR in Cologne. Ligeti wanted to control timbre. This is shown in his piece Atmospheres. He sought to represent the technique of additive synthesis acoustically through the use of a large orchestra. In Atmospheres, Ligeti was focused on sustained sound masses, where the musical development manifests itself through timbre and texture rather than melody. The purpose was that the instruments would lose their identity and be absorbed into the sound mass. All that remains is a continuous timbre present from the different family of instruments. Ligeti starts the piece with a sound mass, one of a sustained sound with each instrument of the orchestra playing a different note to create a cluster, as shown within the high woodwinds and all the strings. Also notice how all the strings are in divisie. Let us listen to the example now. Let's take a look now at the second movement of Ligeti's Requiem. Now, considering the size and complexity of this work, uh, this will only be a surface understanding. But essentially, the piece is made up of a double fugue. And we will be looking at the Kyrie subject today. Ligeti is able to create a homogeneous texture. He uses a cantus firmus that every part plays. The entries are hidden by the use of incredibly subtle and quiet dynamics. The melodic lines are indiscernible because there contains only whole and half steps. The contour of the line fluctuates constantly and never contains more than six steps in any single direction before turning around. These are just a few techniques that Ligeti employs in creating no real, audible distinction between the parts. Ligeti has influenced my own music greatly, and this is very much present in a saxophone quartet piece I wrote back in 2018 called A Bee in Your Bonnet. My use of micropolyphony is first present in measure 67. However, we can see how I differ from Ligeti's use. Whereas he would use a cantus firmus, I use various chromatic note groupings that constantly repeat within a fixed register. The soprano eventually comes into a seven note grouping within the space of a tritone, concert B to F. 
the alto is playing a repeated six note grouping within the same register and the tenor eventually comes into an eight note grouping in the same register as well. This example outlines the trajectory of chromatic note groupings of the polyphonic texture for each instrument. At the beginning of every repetition, I always add a rest for the player. For example, the soprano repeats its seven note grouping for a total of 17 notes before receiving a rest. The tenor plays 19 notes of its eight note grouping, and the alto plays 13 notes from its six note grouping. The music continues in the same fashion for the duration of the section. Ligeti's texture would quite often be static and sustained over a long period of time with a more linear development. However, as soon as I had set up the texture, it is broken up by measure 71. The baritone enters and opens up the register with a descending figure while the soprano suddenly jumps up with a screaming glissando gesture. The baritone does the same afterwards. The texture is still maintained between the other two saxophones. However, there are two linear aspects in the section. That is the ever accelerating micro polyphonic texture where the note groupings increase up to 11 as well as a slowly rising register. Its linear aspect is coupled with an ever-changing texture, quick and shrill articulations, and fluctuations in terms of which texture is background or foreground. These changes allows me more freedom as a composer. I have the option to bring out certain textures and let others recede. The biggest difference, because I pair my music with different textures, it no longer contains the homogeneity that's present in Ligeti's music. Thank you so much for watching the video. It was an absolute pleasure for me to share my music with all of you. Now, before I go, I implore you to think critically about how the music you listen to influences the music you write.